Here are some of the first things that you can do on the Motorola Moto G56 after the initial configuration. So at first what you can do is check notifications because most likely you will see this Android setup notification where you can tap over here in order to finish setting up your device. Where you can for example copy data from another device. So you can proceed and select, well tap on the notification in order to go through all these options that you will see on this screen. Most of them are actually pretty much the same, if not all of them actually, are the same that you can see during the initial configuration. So this is pretty much a second chance to, for example, copy data as it is written over here. I actually went, just went through the initial configuration, so I know I don't want to go through that again because I already know what's in there and I don't want to use any of these options. But in your case, it can be quite useful. Another thing that you can do is sign into your Google account. So if you didn't set up you to your Google account during the initial configuration, or if you want to add more Google accounts, then of course we can go to settings and then over here we can scroll down in order to find passwords, pass keys and accounts. So once you go over here, you want to press add account and then you want to choose Google. After that, you should be able to find the sign-in page so you can just add another account or, of course, multiple accounts. You can add as many accounts pretty much as you want to. Now, besides that, once you set up the Google account, the next step is the screen lock and the biometrics. So if you didn't set up a password yet for your phone, then, of course, this is now a good time to do so. So if you want to set up a password, we want to go to security and privacy in the main menu of the settings. Next, we're going to go to device unlock and over here we can go to screen lock where you can choose pattern, pin or password as your password type. So, for example, I'm going to set up a simple pin code. I'm just going to write four zeros. Of course, use a more uh, complex password than me and we're going to just proceed. Then we need to enter the password again, confirm and we go. Then we have the lock screen notifications where you can choose to see all notifications on the lock screen. Don't show notifications at all in the lock screen, of course. And then you can also uh, hide the sensitive content from the lock screen. And there we go. And if you want to set up biometrics such as the fingerprint sensor or face recognition, then over here we have fingerprint and face unlock. And of course, in order to use them, we need to set up the screen lock password first before you can uh, add to the fingerprint sensor or face unlock. You need to have the screen lock enabled. Once you do that, another thing that is worth checking out is the theft protection. So while we are here in a device unlock, we can go to theft protection and we can enable, for example, these options over here like the theft detection lock, offline device lock. There is also remote lock and find my device. So if you can, you can go over here to the find hub. And over here we can enable, uh, allow this device to be located. So um, it seems that the Find My Device has changed the name or at least over here. So as you can see, if we go here, we, we can see that this is Find My Device, but in this case it is called Find Hub. All right, so once we set up the protection for our phone, another thing that we can do is update our software. So essentially you want to check if there is any update for the operating system. In the main menu we can go to system updates over here and then you should be able to press check for updates. And if there is any update then you should be able to download it right after that and of course install it once it is downloaded. So you want to do that you always pretty much want to have the latest version of your operating system and if there is not if there is no update waiting for you, then you should see that the device is up to date as well. After that, we can go to the Play Store. So if you set up your Google account, you can easily open the Play Store. Let's skip that for now. Now tap on your profile over here in the top right corner. And then you want to go to Manage Apps and Device. Over here you should be able to find updates available. So we can tap on this option in order to find the list of apps that are waiting to be updated. So of course, just like with the software, you want to make sure that your apps are up to date. So you can go one by one and update every app or you can just simply press update all over here. After that, we can go back to the settings 
this time we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna go to display settings there are some display settings that are quite basic and i think these are always one of the first things that you can do such as the adaptive brightness or the brightness of the screen in the general so if the display is too bright or too dark you can adjust it over here as you can see if you tap on the brightness level we can adjust the brightness of the screen if you are a fan of the adaptive or automatic brightness, then of course you can turn it on or make sure that it is enabled, otherwise you can turn it off so that you always have the same brightness level and you can manually adjust that. You can also adjust the brightness level by going to the control center over here. Now, next is the dark theme, which can be easily enabled or disabled over here. You can also tap on the dark theme itself in order to set up a schedule that will automatically turn on dark theme and turn it off based on a time of the day. After that we're gonna go to display refresh rate which by default is set up to smart and balance which is a good choice but if you actually prefer to use 120 hertz pretty much all the time then you want to set it up to use hyper smooth which unfortunately for some reason the numbers are hidden be behind this all this text but essentially hyper smooth is 120 hertz efficiency first is 60 hertz and smart and balance is 120 most of the time but it can be downgraded to 60 when the battery consumption is too high besides that we also have the automatic screen rotation i'm personally not a fan of the screen rotation so i keep it off but if you wish to be able to rotate your screen in apps that support that then of course we can turn this option on and okay i think that's all in terms of display settings besides that we also have a battery setting so let's go over here and let's go to optimized charging over here we have some basic information about how it works and what it does so to keep it short optimized charging is Recommended to use if you always have a pattern when you charge your phone. So for example, if you charge your phone at night every day, so every time you charge your phone, you do this at the same time of the day, then you can enable optimized charging and your phone will learn charging patterns. And then based on that, once the phone learns a little bit about your charging patterns, then the battery will be limited to 80% when you are charging. However, when the phone knows that you are about to unplug the charger, it will allow to charge back to 100%. And this is, of course, to uh, keep the battery in a healthy state for as long as possible. However, if you never charge at the same time, so you, for, for example, once you charge it in the morning, sometimes in the evening, etc., then it is really pointless to have this option enabled. After that we have the overcharge protection, which allows you to limit the battery to 80%, so this is pretty much the same as the previous one, but this one is recommended uh, if you do not have the pattern, so this is like the other option for those that do not have charging pattern. However, I know that 80% can be quite annoying to use because, well, you don't use 100% of the battery, or at least in theory, so you might not want to use it, but if you're looking for this option, then of course you can turn it on over here. Keep in mind that the battery will charge only up to 80% because this is how batteries are optimized nowadays. We can go to adaptive battery to make sure that it is enabled. And we can also enable battery percentage over here in the top right corner so that we always know how much percentage is left before the battery is completely drained. All right, so once battery settings is over, then we can, I believe, also go to the home and lock screen settings where we can find control center. And over here, if you want to, you can switch from the classic style. Like, as you can see over here, we have four uh, main buttons when we go to notifications and then, of course, default uh, control center. But you can also switch to modern style, which separates notifications and makes the control center look more modern-ish. So for example in order to go to notifications we can swipe on the left side of the phone like this and if you want to go to the control center you can swipe on the right side and then the control center looks like this. Of course you can swipe between notifications and the control center all the time so if you like the new modern look then of course you can enable it over here. Next we're gonna go back to the settings again to the main menu then we're gonna scroll down and go to system now over here go to performance 
and then you can also enable this option over here smart app launch which enables device to learn app usage patterns so apps can be launched quickly besides that there is also the ram boost option which can be quite useful as well of course and the phone uses ai option uh, by default so the amount of gigabytes of additional ram is pretty much set up on the uh, well when we are using the phone pretty much so it adjusts based on the uh, phone needs now uh, we're gonna go to the gestures so let's go back to the main menu and over here you should be able to find the gestures there we go and over here we have the system navigation so if you want to use three buttons for navigation if you wish to have three buttons at the bottom of the screen then of course we can choose this option over here besides that we can go to settings in order to change the button order to move the back button to the left or right side and if you prefer to use the gesture then of course you can switch it up over here so it's up to you which one you prefer to use and last but not least we can uninstall the bloatware so this is the pretty much last thing that we can do or maybe second to last actually there is one more thing that i'm gonna mention in a second but unfortunately this phone has lots of apps that are pre-installed for us without our consent and we don't need these apps at all so many games are pre-installed over here some additional apps like Timo, uh, TikTok and so on and so forth if you don't use them then of course you can uninstall them well maybe TikTok is not a bad choice over here but some other choices like this call app or adopt scan or booking I'm not sure if we really need them so what you can do is you can press and hold your finger on the app then start moving it and then you can drop on uninstall and you want to do that with every app that you know you won't ever use and yeah the last thing that i want to show you is in the app drawer we can tap on these three dots over here in the top right corner actually scratch that i thought we're gonna go to the settings of the app drawer over here but evidently not okay so i just figured it out I wanted to show you how to disable these app suggestions that we have at the top of the app drawer so if you want to do that we're gonna go back to the settings open home and lock screen choose home settings and then we want to go to home screen style and then tap on the setting icon right next to the app tray and over here we have suggestions so we can disable suggestions in all apps list and after that as you can see there are no app suggestions at the top all right so I think I have shown you everything that i wanted to show you i think these are essentials for this phone if i missed something that you think is quite important to do on this phone then of course let me know in the comments you can share it with others and from now on you can just start personalizing your phone you can start downloading apps using the play store you can change your wallpaper and so on and so forth so thanks for watching leave a like and subscribe